In this video, I'm planning on doing an example problem where we're going to solve a first law problem with a solid and a liquid. So basically what we have is we have a container of water and we're going to put a piece of iron in this water and cool it off. So basically this is a quenching problem. Um, let's write down some information for our problem. So first of all, the volume of the water. So when I do these problems, and you don't have the problem statement for this particular problem, but usually I read the problem statement and then I and then I um, make sure that I'm really clear what the problem is, like what the system is, and what the problem is asking for, and what the processes are. And then I start writing down the information that I have and what I'm looking for. So first of all, with this one, the volume I'm going to try and write bigger. The volume of the water is equal to 0 0.5 meters cubed. The temperature, so the initial temperature of the water is 25 degrees Celsius. So basically this um, water here, and I'm going to actually draw the system. So our system is going to be this water, basically. Um, so this is the volume of so the volume of the water is 0.5 meters. The initial temperature of the water is 25 degrees Celsius. And then we have this piece of iron in the water. And the mass of the iron, so I'm going to put mass, and I'm just going to use Fe for iron. So the mass of the iron is equal to 50 kilograms. And the initial temperature of the water is 80, or sorry, of the iron is 80 degrees Celsius. So basically we have a piece of iron that's at 80 degrees Celsius. We're putting it in the water and we want to know what, we want to know what is T2 and this is at thermal equilibrium. So what thermal equilibrium means is that the temperature of the iron and the temperature of the water are the same. Like basically they're not changing anymore. And so let's write down some information about our system. First of all, I'm going to specify that this is water. This is Fe. And so a couple things we can note about the system is, first of all, this is a closed system. And it's a closed system because there's no mass flow in or out of the system. Um, the, and also the system, so here's our, our system boundary is around here, around the water. So, and our system is also a constant volume. So now we have the information about our system and we've identified um, some things that are going to be happening and also we've identified that it's a closed system because there's no mass flow in or out and there's constant volume. So now let's make some assumptions. So first of all we're going to assume that the water and iron are incompressible. So one's a liquid and one's a solid so we're assuming that they're incompressible is a pretty good assumption especially since there's no indication here that this is at high pressure. Um, it's a stationary system, so we're going to assume that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the change in potential energy, which is equal to zero. Um, there's no work, so there's the, it's a constant volume, so there's no boundary work, um, there's no electrical work, there's no paddle wheel, so there's no work. And this container is adiabatic. And that would that's actually something that would be mentioned in the problem statement. So um, this container is adiabatic, which basically means that there's no heat into or out of the out of this container. So this means that it's well insulated. 
All right, so we have our drawing, we have our problem information, our assumptions. Now we want to identify the equations, equation or equations that we're going to need to solve this. So basically we're going to need, we want to do an energy balance to figure out what the final temperature is. So we're going to use the first law. So Q minus W is equal to delta U plus delta KE plus delta PE. Well, right away, we already said that um, these two terms were zero. So we can say they're zero. And then we also don't have any heat going in or out of the system. So remember, it's adiabatic, so this is our system boundary here. There's no heat going in or out because it's adiabatic. So Q is zero. And we also said there was no work. So the work is zero. So basically, we have zero is equal to delta U. Well, this looks a little weird until we remember that um, the internal energy is an extensive property. And so basically what that means is that it can, we can write it as, an, as a sum of the internal energies of the system. So we do have this water and iron in our system. The iron is losing heat and the, and the water is gaining an equal amount of heat. So if we do have the internal energy of the water and the internal energy of the iron. So delta U is equal to the change in internal energy of the iron plus the change in internal energy of the water. And this is equal to zero. So let's summarize this equation here. So we have that delta U, well, actually, yeah. So delta U is equal to the change in internal energy of the iron plus the change in internal energy of the water. And this is equal to zero. So now what we want to do, so we have a solid and a liquid, and we need the change in internal energy. So we're going to use the specific heats. And one thing that I didn't put in my assumptions that I should have is that since we have a water and a liquid, and since we said they're incompressible, and it's, this is basically a low pressure system, we're going to assume um, constant specific heats. And we're just going to look them up at room temperature. OK, so now let's go to here. So <clears throat> um, we can rewrite this equation as this is equal to the, the mass of the iron multiplied by U2 minus U1 plus the mass and I'm going to change water to, actually, yeah, I'll just leave this as water, so W. And this is U2 minus U1 um, is equal to zero. So this, this is for the I, this change in internal energy of the iron. So this is going to be the specific heat of the iron, or the heat capacity of the iron, since we're talking about a solid. T2 minus T1 iron. And then this is equal to the heat capacity of the water multiplied by T2 minus T1 of the water. So right away we can see, now we have an equation that we can solve for T2, which is what we're looking for. And we know what the initial temperatures are we know what we can look up the specific heat of the iron, so we're going to look this up at room temperature. So I'm going to specify at room temp. And we're also going to look up the specific heat of the water, so I'm going to specify that we're looking this up at room temperature. And so it looks like we're we might be missing. So we have the mass of the iron. That was given. We need the mass of the water. Well, if we go back to what we have, 
So we have the mass of the iron right here. We know the volume of the water, so we can calculate the mass of the water from the density. So we have, so right now I'm looking for the mass of the water. So the density is equal to the mass over the volume. So this means that the mass is equal to the density multiplied by the volume. So the density of water, and I'm just going to assume, um, I'm just going to assume that the density of the water is 1,000 kilograms meters cubed. So this is equal to 1,000 kilograms meters cubed multiplied by 0 0.5 meters cubed, which is equal to 500 kilograms. So now we have everything we need. We have the mass of the iron, the mass of the water, um, the specific heat of the water and iron, and we know what the initial temperature is for both the water and the iron, so we can calculate T2. So let's plug everything into our equation. So we have 50 kilograms. Multi and actually, I'm going to rewrite the full equation so you can see what I'm plugging things into. So I have 50 kilograms, because that's the mass of the iron, multiplied by 0 0.45 kilojoules kilogram degrees Celsius, multiplied by T2, which is what we're looking for, minus 80 degrees Celsius, plus 500 kilogram, multiplied by 4.18 kilojoules kilogram degrees Celsius. So these two specific heats, I just looked those up. So that's the specific heat of iron and water at room temperature. And then this is multiplied by T2 minus 25 degrees Celsius is equal to zero. So then we can solve for T2, which is equal to 25.6 degrees Celsius. Now let's look at a um, let's look at another like let's consider well what if we have the same problem so we have our water we have our iron so the H two O and this is a closed system we have the iron and what if we have a paddle wheel in here so the system is still basically the same it's adiabatic. And we have, there's, it's a closed system, so there's no water flowing in or out, or there's no mass flowing in or out. And we're putting a piece of iron in the water, and we're cooling off the iron. So the, the water and the iron are going to change temperature until they reach equilibrium at some final temperature. And let's say that the paddle wheel is, inputs 500 kilojoules of work. So basically what we're doing is we're stirring the water to um, add some convection effect to the cooling. Um, so all of our information is the same. Like if we go back to this initial problem statement, everything's the same except now we have paddle wheel work. So everything is going to be the same except when we write the first law equation, so we have Q minus W is equal to delta U plus delta KE plus delta PE. These two terms are still zero. Q is still zero because there's no heat in or out, but now we have work, so the work is not zero. So we have minus, because it's minus work, and then the work is into the system, so that means that it's going to be negative work in is equal to delta U. So then we have that the work in is equal to delta U. And then delta U is equal to the change in internal energy of the iron plus the change in internal energy of the water. And I should stick to my terminology. So this was Fe. So, <clears throat> and this is, so now we can, I'm gonna subtract the work over 
So I'm going to have delta change in internal energy of the iron plus the change in internal energy of the water minus the work in is equal to zero. So now I, I basically have the same equation I did before, except now I have work in. So I'm going to have the mass of the iron multiplied by the specific heat of the iron multiplied by T2 minus T1 of the iron plus, and for the water, I have the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by T2 minus T1 of the water minus the work input is equal to zero. So I have everything I need. I, I know what everything is. I, the work is given. And so I can plug everything in and solve for T2. So then I get 50 kilograms multiplied by 0 0.45 so this is the specific heat of the iron at room temperature. And I have T2 minus 80 degrees Celsius plus 500 kilograms multiplied by the specific heat of the water, which is 4.18 kilojoules kilogram degrees Celsius multiplied by T2 minus 25 degrees Celsius minus, now I have the work, 500 kilojoules is equal to zero. So if I solve this equation for T2, I get that T2 is equal to 25.8 degrees Celsius.